Hello, and welcome to Wicked Wednesdays, your weekly podcast on sex and sexuality, with an emphasis on BDSM kink and poly relationships. I'm your host, Wicked Fellow, and this week we're going to answer the question, what makes a good dom? Of course, that means we'll be talking about what makes a bad dom as well, as a compare and contrast. I'm a little bit late getting the episode out this week. I've been very busy. However, much of what I've been doing has been working on the studio. It will take me quite a while to build the walls and soundproofing necessary to turn this into a true studio. So I went ahead and invested in some sound blankets, which I think will help the sound in here quite a bit. I know last week there was a lot of reverb because I was recording in an open basement, which has a lot of reverb. And I think this will sound a lot better. I haven't done a lot of sound tests yet, but from what I can hear, this is a much more dead space and should offer a much better audio experience, which is good as this is a podcast. Before I get started this week, I want to send a very special thank you to my patrons who made this possible. I took the patron funds this month and invested it right back into the studio. So that's the soundproofing, which is very expensive. That will still come into play once I build the studio walls as they keep sound out. The soundproofing on this side reduces reverb and makes it a much more dead space and a much quieter space. So thank you guys very much for that. I would not have been able to afford that this month without the patronage. Our new patrons this week are Peanut Butter Cup Minis, which is a great name, and Edward, also a great name. But Peanut Butter Cup Minis, I think, is my favorite patron pseudonym so far. If you would like to become a patron, head over to our website at www.wickedfellow.com. You can find all of our links there, our Patreon site, and that's where the podcast is actually hosted. You can also find links to contact me directly, and all of our adult sites are also featured on that site. I frequently talked about in the podcast, you know, what makes a good dom, what is good dom behavior, what's a good dom philosophy. And obviously, I'm coming at this from my perspective, my singular one-person perspective. There are a lot of ways to play. And the way that I do domination, the way that I do BDSM and kink play, it works for me, it works for my partners. But it may be completely opposite of the way you play, and that is fine. This is going to be my take on qualities that I think make a good dom more generally. And I think that these will apply across the different play styles and across different relationship styles. We'll see. I hope to get some feedback from you guys on this episode. Good experiences that you've had with doms, bad experiences that you've had with doms. And for the doms out there, you know, send in what you think. If I'm off base, let me know. I'm happy to talk about it. So to begin on this, as I've said many times, I have a very sub-focused approach to domination because that's what I enjoy and that's what I get out of it. The fulfillment of the sub, seeing them progress, seeing them happy and content and enjoying their domination, that's what I enjoy. That's what gets me off. That could be my kink if I have one. And I do take it fairly extreme. I don't expect everyone to be 100% sub-focused like I am because there's varying ways of play. However, I think one of the more common complaints that I hear from subs about bad doms is that they're only in it for themselves. They have a very selfish motivation. They're not really concerned about what the sub is feeling, what the sub is thinking, what the sub is experiencing. And so, you know, the opposite of that is being very into what the sub is thinking, feeling, and experiencing. And that's my focus. There can be a balance, obviously. You don't have to go so far as I do, where the only enjoyment I get out of a scene is whether or not my sub is being fulfilled. You know, that's my style. That's how I operate. But there should be balance. You know, you can certainly enjoy the kinks that you're into. You can certainly enjoy whatever it is about BDSM that turns you on with a partner. However, you can't be entirely self-focused. You should be looking into, are they enjoying it? Are they into this? Are they having a good time? You know, step one to being a good dom is being at least partially focused on how is your partner doing? Are they having fun? Are they enjoying it? So I think that would have to be my number one requirement for being a good dom. You can't be selfish. You can't be entirely self-focused. You have to be able to look outside of yourself at least a little bit. And I've been listening to a lot of What's the Safe Word, as I've mentioned before. And Mr. Christopher was talking about his progression and 
he was saying that for him, the best doms are people who have been subs and have played as subs. And from his conversation and other conversations I've heard from the, the more gay side, the more LGBTQ side of BDSM, that seems like a more common progression, at least on the gay dom sub style. I can't speak to this personally because that's not my experience. So I'm pulling much from his experience, but it does make sense. And his reasoning was, if you want to be a good dom, you need to know what it's like to be a sub and have these things done to you. So you understand what you enjoy. So you understand how to be a better dom. In my experience on the, the more cis hetero straight side of BDSM, it's not that common for someone to progress in the same way as in when they first get into the scene and they're younger, they're a submissive. And then as they get older and they get more experience, they shift into a more dominant role. I'm sure that that is some people's experience in the cis hetero scene. It's not mine. And I don't know any other doms that followed that route. So I don't think it's as common on my side of things, the way that I play. There's a lot to be said for that. However, I think that you don't necessarily have to have ever been a sub to be a good dom. I think you do have to have empathy. I think you do have to be able to read the person you're with and see how your actions are affecting them. If you're completely unconcerned with them and you don't care about what they're experiencing and feeling and thinking, then you can be very selfish and you can not necessarily give them a good time. So while yes, I think it might be very enlightening for doms to try being a sub, I don't think you can do that if it goes against your nature. So for myself, I could play a sub. I don't think that there's any enjoyment in that for me. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll give it a try. But I've tried to be a good dom by being attentive to the needs of my sub and being empathetic and thinking about them and what they're feeling and experiencing. I don't necessarily have to experience that myself to see how my actions are affecting my submissive. I do very much believe that we are kind of stamped out of the factory in the nature that we are. So when I was younger, I was still dominant. I was just a younger dominant. I was a less experienced dominant. I was probably not a very good dominant, especially at first. I hope that I've gotten better as I've gotten older and more experienced. I've gained a lot of maturity and wisdom, I hope. And I know that it can be very challenging to be a younger, more inexperienced dominant. You know, how do you gain that experience without playing and how do you play without experience? There's a catch 22 there. I will probably have an episode dedicated to tips that I think might help a younger dominant learn the ropes, become a better dom, pitfalls to avoid, etc. I, I will focus on that in another episode, but I want to keep moving forward with what I believe makes a good dom in general. So not being entirely selfish, having empathy for your sub, having some focus on your sub at least. You don't have to go as far as I do, but make sure that you're not only doing it for yourself and what gets you off and what makes you happy. Now, I do want to have a quick caveat. I know from experience that there are a lot of submissives that that is in fact their kink. You know, this is one of those don't kink shame me. Well, what if kink shaming is my kink jokes? I know that some submissives really get off on their dominant, at least appearing to not have any regard for them whatsoever. That moves into this humiliation play that we've talked about. And even Katja, who very much values my subcentric approach, definitely has a kink for when she feels like I'm being ambivalent to her needs and her desires and really treating her more as an object than a human. However, the reason that she can get off on that and find comfort and enjoyment in that is that no matter how hard I'm being on her, she knows that behind that is me and I'm there and I will take care of her. And while I may be acting as if she means nothing to me, while I may be acting as if she's just an object, she knows that she can count on me to be there. If the scene needs to stop, if she goes too far, whatever. She knows that I'm backstopping that with my empathy, with my very strong sub focus. So she feels safe in that. She's had other experiences with more sadistic doms where she felt the same way, where she felt like, you know, this person just doesn't care about me and 
I am just a piece of meat to them. And it was not a turn on for her because it did not have that underlying, strong, empathetic, caring relationship to build that foundation of play on. Obviously, I want to get her in here and have her talk about that and her experiences some more. But that's just a compare and contrast. So, yes, some submissives might really get off on an at least appearingly insensitive and uncaring dom who's very hard on them. In my experience, that has to be underlaid by someone who actually does care very much about the sub and does care very much about their needs. I only play with Katya like that because I know it fulfills her. If that behavior made her unhappy and made her feel bad about herself and made her get pressed down low in a way she did not want to be pressed down low, I would not enjoy it. And it would not be something that we did. So we play that way fairly frequently, but I know it's something she enjoys and she knows that she can trust me with that amount of power over her. You know, rule number one, you can't be entirely self-centered. You have to at least be able to look outside yourself and make sure that the needs of your sub are being met. Integrity is a big one. Trust comes from integrity. And the dom-sub relationship is such a foundational trust relationship. When you're expecting a sub to place themselves in your control and give that power to you and trust you not to abuse that power or abuse them, you know, sometimes as far as I'm placing my life in your hands, Trust is a huge thing, and trust doesn't come without integrity. Can they count on you? Can they count on you when no one's looking? And that's kind of the crux of integrity, is that integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching over your shoulder. And often when you're a dom, you know, you're the top of the pyramid. There's nobody there to check you to make sure you are doing the right thing. So as a dom, I think that having integrity is a huge requirement. It's a prerequisite to being a good dom. If your sub can't trust you, I don't feel like you can be a good dom. No matter how skilled you are, no matter how attractive you are, no matter how good you are at domination and, you know, flogging or tying or latex play, using psychoanalysis on your sub, all those things that are part of the dom skill set, if they can't trust you, I don't think you can be a good dom. So integrity is a big one. And I feel like that's another one that I frequently hear in complaints about bad doms is I couldn't trust them. I felt like if I tried to use my safe word, they may not have stopped. You know, that's not integrity. Integrity is making a rule and sticking to that rule. Even when it's difficult, even when it's not what you want to do, you do the right thing. Integrity. Passion. I think passion is a requirement. Now, what that passion looks like is going to vary across the entire spectrum. What you are passionate about can be rope play or leather or impact play, whatever, or just the general BDSM dom sub power dynamic. That could be your passion. But nobody wants to play with somebody who's not enthusiastic about it. Now, what that enthusiasm looks like is going to vary, obviously. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily giddy and hopping up and down when you get into a scene. You might, and there's nothing wrong with that if that suits your style. But you can certainly tell when you're talking to somebody about a subject they're passionate about. You're having small talk with someone, and you're talking about varying things, and suddenly you stumble upon something that they are really passionate about, really interested in, really focused on. And you can see how their attention shifts, their body language shifts. All of a sudden, they're not just shooting the breeze with you, but now they're focused. Now they want to tell you something about a passion they have, their hobby, or the thing that they enjoy doing. So I feel like that passion is a requirement for being a good dom. A submissive doesn't want to be with someone that's just kind of ho-hum about it, you know, Yes, we could do BDSM stuff, or we could go watch a football game. I really don't care. That's not very inspiring for a sub. That's not somebody that you really want to keep playing with. So keeping your passion, finding your passion, figuring out what it is about the BDSM lifestyle that you really enjoy, and pursuing that and becoming an expert in that area, or just practicing to the best of your ability in that area, and really pursuing that thing that 
originally drew you to BDSM and the kink lifestyle? Kind of by nature, if you're into this, that's the stepping stone of being passionate about it. But I think that in a DS relationship, that passion carries through to the sub especially. Does your sub feel like you're passionate about them? This doesn't have to be romantic love. This doesn't have to be any sort of relationship outside of the scene. But when the sub is with you as a dom, do they feel like they are the complete focus of your attention? Do they feel like you are bored and would rather be doing something else? That's the kind of passion I'm talking about. That's the kind of passion that I feel like is necessary to be a good dom. Self-confidence. Again, I feel like this is kind of a prerequisite to being a good dom. And as I was saying earlier, I do feel like a large part of our personality and who we are is stamped into us. I don't feel like we necessarily choose these directions. I never chose to be a dominant. This is just who I am. It's who I've always been. And Katja didn't choose to be a submissive. That's just who she is. And for her, that self-confidence is very attractive. Self-confidence in a dom, it's one of those two-edged swords because I do feel like all the subs that I have been with, that I've experienced with, really are attracted to that high level of self-confidence. However, that self-confidence can lead doms astray into arrogance. And arrogance being the same coin as self-confidence, but arrogance is confidence run amok. Arrogance is never being willing to admit a weakness or that you're wrong or that you don't know something. So that same thing that I think is a prerequisite to being a good dom can also be the number one failing of a bad dom. They think they know it all. They have nothing to learn from anybody. They're always right. And that can make them very fragile and brittle when it comes to their domination style. Because self-confidence means that you can handle being questioned. It means that you can handle explaining things. It means that you are willing to say, I don't know, or I'm not experienced in this. I've never played this way before. Again, that self-confidence, if it's a front, if it's a pretense, if it's something that's not genuine, anytime that you press on that self-confidence, and I say self-confidence in quotes here, that's when you tend to get a bad reaction. That's when you tend to see that, oh, actually you're fairly insecure. And my questioning you on this point is exposing those insecurities. Me telling you that you're wrong on this point is exposing those insecurities. Someone that is secure, someone that does have good self-confidence and genuine self-confidence can handle any amount of questioning and any amount of pressing on that issue because they know what they know. And they're not afraid to say, I don't know. They're not afraid to say I was wrong because none of us are infallible. None of us are perfect. So true self-confidence, self-confidence that comes from a place of experience and a place of understanding what you know and what you don't know, understanding your strengths and your weaknesses and being self-confident enough to admit both. Genuine self-confidence, I think, is a prerequisite to being a good dom. Skill, skill in the art of being a dominant. Now that can take so many different forms. You can be an outstanding rigger. You can be an outstanding flogger. You can be an outstanding brat tamer. Th there are so many skills and I'm not talking about being a jack of all trades necessarily. I don't necessarily feel like any one dom can master all aspects of domination. Maybe they can. I haven't by any means. I have certain areas that I'm very strong in. And those are my go-to skill sets when I'm talking about domination. I have other areas that I've never even played in. I'm willing to try those, but I would want to try them in an experimental and safe way that it would allow me to gain skill in those areas before I considered myself proficient in that style of domination. Skill tends to almost always go with experience. It's very difficult to do any of these things well the very first time you do them. This ties into that self-confidence issue in that being overconfident, feeling like, oh, well, I've never done flogging before, but how hard could it be? It can be very difficult to do well. It's not just swinging a rope at somebody. It's not just hitting somebody with a stick because the pacing, the selection of location, the reading of the experience in the sub, 
understanding if they're getting too much or too little, understanding how to keep their excitement going so they're not just sitting there and bored or so that they're not in such a heightened state of fear and anxiety that they're not enjoying the scene at all. It's all a very careful balance and it changes scene to scene, person to person, even scene to scene with the same person. So knowing that skill set, knowing what it is you're good at, practicing those skills, learning more about those skills in whatever area is of interest to you, that's kind of a prerequisite. It ties into being a good dom because there is obviously a larger umbrella of dominant and submissive relationship. You know, I can have a dominant submissive session with somebody at a Starbucks sitting across a table from them with no gear involved no visible play involved. It's all psychological. It's all done with words. That's one of my skill sets. I can also have a very intense impact session with somebody. I can do that because I've done it so many times with many different partners and different experience levels, different levels of play, different intensities. That all comes from experience. It all comes from, I've had this wealth of experience to draw on. So I know how to practice my trade. To be a good dom, you don't have to have a mastery of all of the dominant skills. You don't have to have shibari and leather and latex and rope and psychological and all of the things. But I feel like to be a good dom, you need to have experience and at least some expertise in one of those styles of play. You know, what is it that you do as a dom? What is it that you do with your subs? How do you play? This is kind of amorphous, but again, you have to have something you do as a dom to be a good dom, and you need to be good at that thing that you do. We talked about self-confidence and a skill set. I think that self-control is a huge aspect of being a good dom. I know that some doms like to be very passionate. You know, the more primal style doms, the more animalistic styles in that scene space having a bit of animal aggression and a bit of wildness is part of the play. That's not necessarily where I'm going with self-control and self-discipline. Unfortunately, I see a lot of doms who have very, very high standards for their subs, but don't seem to have any standards for themselves. In some ways that speaks to integrity. In some ways that speaks to a lack of self-discipline. If you're going to hold your subs to a high standard, I feel like you need to be able to hold yourself to a high standard. Are you disciplined or are you only good at telling other people what to do and you don't actually do those things yourself? Do you demand that your sub have an exercise program, but you don't bother? That kind of hypocrisy is the same kind of issue when we're talking about a lack of integrity. And I feel like self-control, self-discipline, both over your physical self, but also your mental self. Having the self-control to maintain your temper, having the self-control to not let your passions get the better of you, I think that's crucial in a good dom. When you're in a position of power over somebody, especially someone that you have made helpless, you can absolutely not afford to have a lapse of self-control. Whether that's your passions, your anger, your erotic fixations, whatever it is, a good dom has to be able to control their passions, has to be able to control themselves, has to have good discipline, good self-control. And one of the ways I see this play out is that gray area that a lot of BDSM kink couples have when they play together and one person is the dom and one person is the sub, but they also have a real world relationship that's more on a peer to peer level. And being able to turn off that I'm the dom, I'm the in charge person switch is a special skill. And I don't think everybody has that. It's not always necessary in that in some relationships, it's okay for the dominant to always be dominant and always be in charge and always be the person that's giving the orders. However, that has to be with the consent of the sub in the situation. Unfortunately, what happens sometimes is doms forget that they're not always in charge and they don't always get to say, because I said so, and have that be the last word. And they forget that the authority that's been granted to them, gifted to them by a submissive is sometimes conditional. It's, I will be your sub for this scene, but tomorrow I need you to treat me as your peer and I don't expect you to command me and boss me around. 
Some doms have a hard time with that. I feel like sometimes that's a lack of self-awareness. Sometimes it's a lack of self-control. Sometimes it's a lack of self-confidence. Insecure doms tend to always be putting their power forward and always trying to take control for fear that they won't be seen as dominant. People that are truly dominant and truly self-confident don't need to do that. They don't need to tell you that they're in charge. They're just in charge. And they can also take a back seat when that's appropriate. So being able to turn off that dom switch, being able to understand that this isn't the time for me to be domineering and dominant and in charge. This is a time for me to ask rather than to command. So self-control, it covers all of that. How disciplined are you? Are you asking your sub to do things that you're not able to do yourself? Again, hypocrisy, integrity, self-discipline. Those are all tied together, I believe. And finally, patience. I think that you need to be patient if you're going to be a good dom. You need to allow your sub to grow at their pace. And sometimes that pace will not be what you want. Sometimes it can take much longer. That lack of patience can really sour a relationship. If you're pushing too hard because you want to get somewhere or you want to do something or your sub is not progressing as fast as you would like them to, that can be very detrimental to a good dom-sub relationship. And patience is one of those things that you have to practice. We all get impatient. I'm especially not a very patient person, but I have to master that, use that self-discipline we talked about earlier, take a deep breath, and come at it from a different angle. You know, if you're working with a submissive and you're trying to get them to do something and you've tried and tried and it's just not working, it's time to try a different approach and you might have much better results. Patience is one of those things. Some people are naturally very patient. A lot of these virtues, some people have very natural tendencies towards any one of these virtues, any one of these attributes that I think make a good dom. Patience is something that I've had to work on my whole life. I'm not a very patient person, but it's necessary that I'm patient with my submissives. Since I'm in power, since the dom is in control, they have to exercise that patience. Patience, like all of these attributes, is something that you can practice. If you're very fortunate, you were born as a very patient person. I was not. So it's something that I've had to work on, and it's something that I still have to master on a daily basis. But it is something that will make you a better dom. And I think being patient is a requisite to being a good dom. All of these attributes that I'm talking about, I've tried to apply universally. You know, there's no physical requirement. There's no gender requirement. All of these things, I believe, apply universally and across the entire dom spectrum when we're talking about what makes a good dom. I'd be very interested to hear from you guys what you think makes a good dom. I'm going to continue this more. There's a lot of sub skills and sub attributes that can be nestled into any one of these attributes and we'll do a deeper dive as we move forward. But I'd enjoy your feedback. I'd like to hear from you guys, good experiences and bad experiences you've had as a sub or a dom. Send that stuff into me. Your feedback really helps make this podcast go. And I enjoy hearing from you. I enjoy that correspondence. As I'm speaking about these attributes, I'm not saying that you have to possess all of these to a very high degree to be a good dom. I don't have all of these to the degree that I wish I did. There's a number of things that I'm still working on day to day. There's a lot of things that I feel weak in that I'm continuing to exercise myself and improve on. So this is not coming from a place of judgment. It's coming from a place of these have been my observations. These are the things that I respect in a good dom. These are the things that I expect in someone who's going to take on the role of a dominant. No matter what style of domination they do, no matter how they play, I think these things are incredibly valuable to being a good dom. As always, consent is king. Take very good care of each other. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>